Good morning and welcome to St. Philip Lutheran Church in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Welcome to worship with us. Uh, a couple of announcements before we continue with worship. Uh, first, some prayer concerns uh, for this community of faith. Um, John Holshauser uh, has been put on hospice, um, so please keep him in your prayers, the family uh, in your prayers, and um, of course extra prayers uh, for June, his wife, during this time. Um, they are isolated uh, at Eagle Crest, um, so notes and cards and phone calls uh, would probably be uh, greatly appreciated. Um, also, uh, for our newsletter, since there's not a lot of uh, news coming up, um, we're actually going to do a lot of recapping of, of what we've done. So if you have any pictures of, of any worship services that you've taken uh, part uh, in with us, um, if you would send them to the office uh, via email, um, if you came and picked up palms or came for communion or, or anything like that, um, if you would send those to, to Linda in the office and uh, we can get those included in, in our newsletter. Um, and then, uh, of course, uh, we're going to keep continuing our song and story worship on Wednesday evenings at 630 um, for as long as uh, we're unable to gather in person. So if you have any uh, extra hymns that you would like to hear, um, we can try to work those in. So if you would send those to either me or Arthur or um, to the office, we'll make sure that we'll try to include some of those uh, in the upcoming weeks. Um, let's take a moment of silence uh, and gather our hearts and prepare to continue with worship. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. Just as God's work of creation never ends, so the gifts received in baptism are renewed every day. Let us give thanks together for the life given in baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. We give you thanks, O God. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day you shower us again with the waters of life. We give you thanks, O God. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water of baptism, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. We give you thanks, O God. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Jesus, after your death and resurrection, you sent your followers into the world to proclaim your resurrection to the entire world. Send us into the world to bear witness to all that you have done in our lives. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Acts. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This is Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven, and he will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath's day journey away. 
When they had entered the city, they went up to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon the zealot, and Judas son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to Mark, glory to you, O Lord. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. When all this started, uh, the physical dinsta- uh, distancing, this time of not gathering, we, I, wasn't really sure what to expect. We were all trying to flatten the curve and keep the spread of the virus to a minimum. Surely this won't be too long, we thought. And surely things will go back to normal soon. Surely we won't have to wait. But we did. And we had. A couple of weeks turned into longer. We set new hopes for for gathering. Next week, uh, by the end of the month, surely by Easter. Well, as you no doubt know, uh, Easter Sunday has come and gone. And along with it, Palm Sunday, Maundy Thursday, Good Friday. We've told the story. We've sung the songs. We've driven through to get communion. And through it all, we've waited. We've waited for this to pass. We've waited for the all clear. We've we've waited for the time to come. It's hard to wait, especially when you're waiting for something so good, so meaningful, so comforting. And Christ is risen and we can't go to church. God has done wonderful things and we can't celebrate together. God has done so much. And we're told to wait. Not yet. Stay where you are. But this period of waiting has and and can shape us and influence us positively. Think back to the disciples that we hear about in our lesson from Acts today. They are fresh off of seeing a resurrected Jesus. They they know that God has truly done something amazing and and that the kingdom of God is is quickly approaching. They want to help that kingdom. They they want to help it spread all over the earth. And and they're full of excitement and, and passion and they are eager to help. And so Jesus comes and he says, don't leave Jerusalem. Wait right there. The disciples straight off the the strangest Sunday they've ever had, are made to wait, sit tight, stay. And they don't know for how long. They aren't given a schedule, just wait. But the waiting was key for them. Yes, they they want the kingdom to come, but, but waiting helped them see that the kingdom isn't theirs to bring. It's God's. And by having them wait, by by waiting, it gave them time to see, to recognize, to understand 
that the kingdom is established by God and empowered by God, ruled by God, sustained by God. And as much as the disciples may have wanted to, to rush ahead, this waiting encourages them to let God do God's work of establishing the kingdom in God's way. And in this time of waiting, maybe we learn to see church in the same way. What does God want church, the church, to do, to, to be? And I think for a lot of people, going or coming to church was the point. It's what God wanted, so we did it, and, and it wasn't too bad, you know? Showing up on a Sunday morning is, is what it means to be the church. But that never really was what God wanted. A church service wasn't supposed to be the goal. Rather, it is a means, a, a way to help us get to the true goal of living out God's kingdom every day. The service is meant to shape us for service. We receive forgiveness so that we can pass forgiveness on to others. We are fed so that we may feed others. If you've noticed, while we are doing a lot of the same things that, that we normally do in a Sunday worship service, we aren't doing things exactly the same. And that's intentional. I mean, for one, there, there's no way to recreate the same worship experience online as in person. It, it just doesn't work. But two... It acknowledges that, that the way that we do church isn't the point of the kingdom. The way we do a worship service, as much as we love it and we find comfort in it, the way we do a service isn't the end goal. The goal is to be shaped so that we serve God and serve others and that we live out the kingdom of God that we and, and all disciples are waiting for. During this time of waiting until we gather back, I don't want to just help us see the church. I want to help us be the church. And while things are a lot harder to do right now, we still can be the church. We have a phone tree set up to call and to check in with people on our membership roles. But even if you aren't one of the official callers, you can still make calls to those you know. You can offer encouragement and support and, and prayer. People are sick and hurting and dying. And I'm thinking particularly of John and June Holzhauser. And I've asked if I could share this, which is why I'm mentioning them specifically. But, but in a time when people can't come and gather around them, Phone calls and cards and letters offering prayer and support can be very meaningful. Also, we at St. Philip work closely with, with several organizations locally and, and around the world. And starting today and moving forward, each week during the time that we normally take up the offering, we will highlight one of our local benevolences or, or something that we as St. Philip are doing to help God in the ways of the kingdom. You'll hear a, a little bit about helping hand and help for kids and Lutheran World Relief and Meals on Wheels. We, we can reach out to them during this time, too. Many people are receiving stimulus checks from the government. And if you are in the situation where that money isn't essential for you, you, you might consider sharing some of it with the local agencies that, that we support. Tithing is a good spiritual practice to begin with, and this Extra money can be a wonderful way to go above and beyond in generosity. Giving and supporting these places is a way that we can still be the church. And you can add to your regular giving and make note of it on your envelope when you send it in, or you can make a one-time gift online. You can go to the website and click Give to St. Philip button, and then choose Benevolence in the Give To line. It's right underneath where you enter the amount that you are giving. I mean, it's hard to wait. It's hard not being present. But that isn't an excuse to not be the church. Because we, even now, have the promises of God. 
the disciples waited, but not alone and not without a task. They received the Holy Spirit to comfort, to guide, to support, to draw them together in the mission of God. They prayed. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer. We, too, wait, but not alone and not without a task. We, too, have the Holy Spirit with us to comfort, to guide, to support, to draw us together in the mission of God, to be the church. And we pray. We pray for those in need, for the world, for God's mission to be fulfilled. And even while we wait, we are the church. Even while we wait, God is at work bringing the kingdom. It is not ours, after all, to bring. But God has named us and claimed us to be the church, to share in bringing love and grace and life. And though our methods have changed, God can, God does, and God will use us to bring about the kingdom. Amen. confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. 
Uh, as I mentioned in the sermon, at this point in the service, we're going to explore ways that we are still the church, using who we are and, and what we have to help build up God's kingdom. And today's going to be a bit more of an overview, and in the coming weeks we'll go more into uh, detail on the mission of each of the benevolences. Uh, we work with uh, one worldwide organization, Lutheran World Relief, and they have issued a 75,000 face mask challenge, asking for people to make masks at home to, to share with the LWR um, that they'll send across the country, or uh, across the world. Uh, I posted info on it uh, on our Facebook page, if that interests you, and I'm, I'll share it again this week. Uh, more locally, we support Helping Hand, Help for Kids, and Meals on Wheels. Uh, we reached out to those places this past week, and what they really could use right now, what they could use most, is money. They can make a dollar stretch farther than we can, so, so anything that we donate can be used to pay for someone else's utilities, feed a kid, deliver a meal to a veteran. And as I mentioned, uh, we'll go more in depth into each of those organizations as the weeks go on. Uh, you can give to those benevolences through your regular giving or by, uh, by marking it on your envelope or going online to make a one-time gift. Um, if you go online, make sure you select benevolences in the Give To line. Uh, thank you for supporting St. Philip and those places uh, that serve as God's hands and feet in Myrtle Beach and beyond. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places, praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Open the doors we close, O God, and when we fear those who worship you in different ways, guide us to unity and harmony so that we may come to respect and cherish our commonalities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open the paths we ignore, O God, when we prioritize financial gain and convenience over listening to the groaning of the earth. Inspire all to care for the world you have made, so that living things might thrive. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open the rooms we lock, O God, to those who live without a homeland or place of safety. We pray that generous nations offer refuge and peace for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open the hearts we close, O God, to the cries of those in pain. We pray for those isolated physically or emotionally through incarceration, addiction, mental illness, chronic suffering, grief, and all in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Open the ways of love, O God, and the pursuit of peace throughout the world, and bless the efforts of missionaries, healthcare professionals, activists for women and children, and relief workers, especially those who find themselves in harm's way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open the way to eternal life, O God, as we remember those who have died in faith. Free us from the fear of death, that we embrace the peace you have promised. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. is risen just as he said. Go in peace, share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.